Kodak Company is happy to bring you America's favorite family, the Nelsons. Ozzy, Harriet, David, and Ricky. Like most of us, they like to enjoy their good times over again in pictures. And there is no better time than summer for taking pictures. For in summer, good times seem to be all around us, and every day holds a full measure of fun and excitement. A day, for instance, when a proud young man is still a big, wide grin and a very short haircut. A day in which we share the excitements of a new adventure. A day to spend the quiet hours together. These summer days are yours for years to come when you care enough to save them in pictures. Pictures on Kodak film in the familiar yellow box. And now Kodak invites you to enjoy the adventures of Ozzy and Harry. Cut it kind of short on the top, will you, Bob? Whatever you say, you're the doctor. I'll shave it all off if you want. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks. Not this season. I know the girls are supposed to go crazy over that King of Siam thing, but I think I'll wait. I don't blame you. My wife's over the women's club right now listening to some fellow lecture on hairstyles. Oh, you mean Charles? Yeah, that's right. Monsieur Charles. He's a good hairstylist. A little extreme, but he knows his business. Well, you know, those guys have a tough job. Women like to change their hairstyles, get new personalities every year or so. Sort of like the automobiles coming out with new models. Well, it all helps to make life more interesting. Yeah, I suppose. Well, I was looking at some pictures in a magazine the other day, this uh, hairstyle show. Some of those hairdos were really crazy. You're not kidding. <laughs> well, my wife's hair always looks real nice, though. It's conservative. It, it always looks good, but... You know, nothing crazy or mad like that. That's nice. Now, I think Mrs. Eisenhower has the right idea. She wears her hair pretty near the same all the time with those bangs and very becoming on her. The president likes it and, and she likes it, so she stays with it. And personally, I think that makes a lot of sense. Sure does. <laughs> I ought to be the barber. I'm doing all the talking. That's all right. <laughs> I'm sure none of you ladies would ever dream of wearing the same dress day after day, week after week, year after year. You wouldn't think of serving your husband the same menu every night for dinner. Of course you wouldn't. Because you are intelligent, smart, chic women who epitomize the modern adult approach to the challenge of keeping your husband interested and your marriage a success. Your hair, my dear ladies, is truly your crowning glory. But you're almost over. It is the key. You're in just a few more minutes. No personality. I think there are several seats if and you'd like to sit down. And I'll permission. Oh, well, I... I'd like to illustrate just I'll just how sit over here in the back quietly. Thank the you. Personality. I have a little production that I'm sure you will enjoy. Mademoiselle, we are ready. This hairstyle I call excitement. It has just a suggestion of sophistication and a soupçon of, shall we say, uh, je ne sais quoi, something to attract the men. Can you all see, ladies? If you cannot, you are certainly welcome to move up closer.
this hairstyle I call sophistication. It brings to us memories of Monte Carlo, or perhaps an evening of Goethe at the El Morocco or the Stock Club. Ah, here is our typical American girl type. Can you see the one? <laughs> Isn't she refreshing? Right from the campus, our fraternity sweetheart. Now, the sports car fad is sweeping our nation from coast to coast. Regardez, s'il vous plaît. Our gay, devil may care, windswept hairdo. We call it the egg beater. <laughs> the junior prom, the campus sweetheart. Soft light and sweet music. Youthful sophistication in a setting of refreshing naivete. Isn't she sweet? <laughs> Our debutante, all ready for a brisk canter around the park. Note the ponytail. Gay, charming, youthful, sophisticated. Ah, to be young again. <laughs> Quelle belle chose que la jeunesse. Frailty, thy name is woman. Beauty in the boudoir. <laughs> Lady Macbeth. Oh, Madame herself, softly caressed by romantic dreams, moonlight and roses, soft, billowy hair, pleasant dreams, ma chérie. There's a chair up there on the stage, dear. Oh. <laughs> I've been looking all over for you. Well, here I am. <laughs> Now, memories of last summer. Sir Charles sure is a good speaker. Perhaps anticipation of What has he said? <laughs> Goodness sakes, dear, pay attention. Emerging from the surface. Thank, Thank you very much, ladies. Now, that concludes our performance for this afternoon. We still have a little time if there are any questions that you ladies may want to ask. Uh, yes, madame. What good does it do to change your hairstyle if your husband never notices it? Oh, I think you are mistaken, ladies. I'm sure you underestimate the male powers of observation. I'll bet if I asked my husband to describe my hairstyle, he couldn't do it. And I doubt if any of these other ladies' husbands could either. Oh, I must take issue with you, ladies. Let us see if I can prove my point. I notice there is a gentleman seated in our audience. I wonder, sir, if you could help us. What do you want me to do? Is your wife present? Uh, yes, here she is right here. Look away from her, please. Now, would you describe her hairdo for us? Well... Ah, no fair picking. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see now. It's kind of... kind of short in the back. Not too short, uh, sort of a, a modified ducktail. It's got a, a few waves in the front. It's uh, light brown. It's got a, a part on the side, and uh, it looks very neat. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I'm sure you ladies will find that your husbands are all equally observant although they may not want to admit it. And for the benefit of those ladies who may want a new, refreshing personality, I will be at the Parisian Salon this week only, by appointment. Oh, one more thing. If any of you would care to examine the model's hairdos at closer range, you are welcome to come backstage. Thank you. Well, shall we? Shall we what? Oh, uh, uh... Shall we go home? <laughs> well, I meant to ask you, how was the lecture this afternoon? Oh, just fine, Dave. Oh, were you there, Pop? He certainly was. He was the hit of the afternoon. Oh. <laughs> What'd you do, Pop? Fall off your chair? <laughs> well, I darn near did. They had some pretty cute-looking models there. No kidding. Hey, why didn't somebody tell me about these things? You're underage. <laughs> What'd you do, Pop? Oh, they just used me as a horrible example for an experiment. Oh, don't be so modest, dear. I was very proud of your father. He got up and described my hairdo perfectly in front of all those women. 
How about that? Didn't choke up or anything, huh, Pop? <laughs> Look, boys, let's not make such a big deal out of this. I don't think it's unusual for a man to be able to describe his wife's hairdo. Besides, your mother hasn't changed it for 15 years. What's this? <laughs> well, I mean, naturally, you've changed your hair. Uh, I mean, the color. Well, that is, you, you know what I mean. I've changed my hairdo about 15 times in the past 15 years. Well, sure, you've cut it, and, you know, your hair always looks beautiful, short or long. Well, what was this about changing the color? Well, you know, in the summertime, how the sun bleaches it? <laughs> you know, not bleaches it, but gives it those little highlights and overtones. And then uh, as the winter... Uh, personally, I think it shows a frivolous personality to, to change your hair all the time. And it shows a pretty dull personality to wear it the same way for 15 years. Well, uh, what I meant is, well, sure, you vary your hairstyling just enough to make it interesting and to keep up with the trends. But you don't change your... I, I mean, you, you always have the same... The same head? <laughs> Ricky, don't you have some homework to do or something? And speaking of hairstyles... I'll get a cut tomorrow. <laughs> and so will I. What do you mean? Well, if my hair has looked the same to you for 15 years, it's time I did something about it. I'm going to make an appointment with Monsieur Charles the first thing in the morning. <laughs> That's wonderful, dear. I'm glad to see you've changed your mind. Changed my mind about what? Well, about letting this crazy guy do your hair over. Your hair looks beautiful just the way it is, and I like it very much. I always have. Wait a minute. What crazy guy are you talking about? Well, Monsieur Charles. Well, what makes you think I'm not going to him tomorrow? Well, you're doing your hair up in clips. Well, naturally. I want to look nice when I go down there. <laughs> Harriet, this is ridiculous. Do you know what I said to the barber today? I said, there's one thing I'm glad about. My wife never goes in for those silly hairdos. Her hair always looks nice and neat, and, and yet it's not crazy. I had an arithmetic teacher in junior high school. Her hair always looked neat and tidy, too. She was about the dullest woman I ever met in my life. Harriet, you don't need Monsieur Charles to tell you how to do your hair. Well, I've got an appointment with him, so I might as well keep it. Well, okay, it's your head, but in my opinion, your hair looks beautiful just the way it is. Well, thank you, dear. cameras by Kodak are as easy to use as a snapshot camera, and action-packed scenes in full color cost no more to take than black and white snapshots. Brownie movie cameras cost as little as $29.95 or only $3 down. Your family in movies, it's easy as can be. Your family in movies, oh what a hit they will be. Shine as 
brightly as Jupiter or Mars. Just put them all in movies, your own movie stars. Good morning, Pop. Oh, good morning, boys. I got a couple of eggs here, Pop. Do you want them? Are they fried or scrambled? Burnt. Oh. <laughs> We got some toast over there to match. Oh, uh, no, thanks. Uh, where's your mother? Well, she went down to the hairdresser. Boy, well, I hope we have a couple of good pictures of Mom around here. Well, what are you talking about? Well, she said we might not recognize her when she got back. Oh, I'm sure your mother's not going to have anything radical done. Well, I don't know. She looked like she meant business when she left here. Really? Maybe I'd better get down to the beauty shop and see what's going on. Or coming off or... Good luck, Pop, but she left a couple of hours ago. You sure you don't want these burnt eggs, Pop? No, thanks. Well, David, I guess you'll have to eat them. <laughs> well, what are you eating there, Dave? It's a sugar donut, Pop. It's real good. Hadn't you better hurry? Oh. Oh, yeah. As soon as I have one of those donuts and a glass of milk, I'll rush right down. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Monsieur Charles is all booked up for the next few days. Well, try again next week. Thank you very much. Mr. Charles has been so busy since his lecture. <laughs> I imagine so. You know, he can change your whole personality with your hairstyle. Uh, so I understand. Oh, madame, you look beautiful. Thank you. So different. Your own husband will never recognize you. Thank you. Tell me, dear Charles, I'll be in again next week. Au revoir, madame. May I help you, sir? Oh, uh, yes. I was looking for Mrs. Nelson. Do you know where she is? Oh, yes. She's right there under the dryer. Oh, well, may I go in there? Surely. Go right ahead. surprise, would you? Oh, uh, there's a surprise coming up? Just wait until you see what I have done. Well, yes, that's what I was... I, I, uh, what have you done? <laughs> I'm telling. Excusez-moi. Just see what I have done with this lady's hair. Oh, it is beautiful. Wow. I'll have another, Joe. This early in the day, Mr. Nelson? Well, I'm in the mood for it. Make it a double this time. Okay. about it? Well, it's really nothing. My wife's having her hairstyle changed. Changing her hairstyle, huh? Yeah, she went to one of these lectures yesterday about hairstyle and personality. Came home, seemed happy enough. And you said the wrong thing. 
Yeah, how'd you know? Figures. You never come in here this early. Go to the beauty shop right now, get in the works. Who knows what she's gonna look like when she comes home. I probably won't even recognize her. It's a funny thing. I used to have a customer. He was a banana split man, easy on the whipped cream. Had the same kind of problem with his wife. She was always changing the color of her hair. One week she'd be a blonde, next week a redhead, next week a brunette. Started to drive him nuts. He got so bad, I used to find him outside waiting for me to open up. Not bad. You finally do something about it? Yeah, he took the bull by the horns, went out and had his hair dyed. Snow white. <laughs> How about that? When he went home that night, his wife took one look at him and nearly passed out. He told her his hair had turned snow white because he was worrying about her. <laughs> Did she believe him? She hasn't touched a bottle of hair dye since that day. <laughs> that was a pretty clever idea at that. <laughs> Call a cab for you, Mr. Nelson. Oh, no. <laughs> things to do. Uh, were they working on your hair for very long? Mm, about three hours. Oh, and were you satisfied with the results? Yes. Oh, that's nice. I think you're going to have quite a surprise. Oh, <laughs> well, I have a little surprise for you, too. Yes, I see it. You bought a new hat, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I bought it just after I left the barber shop. <laughs> Did you go to the barber shop again today? Yeah, I had kind of a little problem. Get all straightened out? Yeah, I think so. Oh, is dinner almost ready? Yeah, come on in. Oh, uh, after you, dear. <laughs> you like it? Do you think it makes me look too young? I understand this is a, a very popular style with the college boys nowadays, uh, especially the fellows who are being initiated into fraternities. How could you do a thing like that? Well, why not? After all, women aren't the only ones who can change their personalities with their hairstyles every year. You mean you don't like this? <laughs> how long will it take to grow back? Well, how long will it take yours to grow back or, or recover from whatever it is they've done to your hair? What do you mean, grow back? Look! <laughs> you haven't changed it at all. That's the same as you always wear it. Oh, that's a surprise. We tried five or six different styles, but somehow they just didn't seem to be me. So we all finally agreed that you were right. This is the hairstyle that suits me the best. Oh, gee. But you've been wearing it that way for 15 years. No, 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 no. I didn't say that. No, it's okay, dear. The most important thing is that you like it this way. And when someone you're very fond of likes your hair a certain way, well, then, if it's possible, you, you wear it that way. And you really don't like my hair this way? Are you kidding? <laughs> hi, Pop. Oh, uh, uh, hi, Rick. David! Come on in the house, dear, before the neighbors see you. <laughs> Come here, quick. Take a look at Pop. Oh, hi, Dave. Holy smokes, how did that happen? Looks like the Indians got to the wagon train. <laughs> uh, apparently, you folks don't approve of my new hairstyle. Why'd you do it, Pop? Well, I kind of felt my personality was getting a little dull after 15 years of wearing my hair the same way. For goodness sakes, dear, you have a wonderful personality, and I've always liked the way you've had your hair cut. Oh, do you really mean that? Yes, why didn't you ask me before you did a crazy thing like this? Now it's too late. No, uh, not necessarily. <laughs> My whole scalp comes off, the courtesy of Jackson's Joke Shop. <laughs> well, uh, come on, fellas, pick up your mother. <laughs> I 
I didn't know they were going out. Oh, sure, they're going to a big costume party tonight. Oh, I thought they weren't going. I thought they couldn't find any costumes. Well, they just decided on them this afternoon. Oh. Well, uh, who are they going as? Well, Ricky said if he told us who he was going as, we wouldn't let him go. <laughs> what about that? What about Dave? Well, Dave said you gave him the idea for his. Me? Well, no, I didn't talk to him about it. I don't know. Love me sweet, never let me go. <laughs> oh, gee, that's terrific, Rick. <laughs> Daniel Boone, huh? You're kidding, of course. <laughs> well, you see David's outfit. Oh, oh well, who is he going as? Well, I'm not supposed to tell you, but he told me it was your idea. My idea? Dave! <laughs> Dave! Holy smokes! Etc. 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 What do you like it, Mom? <laughs> Here's your hat, Curly. You don't want to catch cold. <laughs> oh, well, have a good time, boys. Yeah, have a good time. Good night, fellas. Good night. Here's how you can make three different kinds of movies with one inexpensive movie camera. This is the Kodak Brownie movie camera turret model. And it takes wide angle scenes, medium shots, and telephoto close-ups. All three with a twist of the turret. Let's watch how it works. First, you'll set the scene with a wide angle shot. Now you follow the action with a closer shot. And here's the star of your show in a telephoto close-up. You'll get all three without moving a step. Time was a turret movie camera cost nearly $200, but this precision-built brownie turret costs less than 85. You can take it and start to enjoy it tomorrow for about 850 down. And because it's made in Rochester by some of the world's finest camera craftsmen, because it's made by Kodak, you know it's good. Ozzie and Harriet are brought to you by the Eastman Kodak Company, who suggest that you visit your regular photo dealer for reliable service and information on all your picture needs.